Hello YouTube, this is Corbin22 here, back with another 100 point squadron build for Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures. Uh, tonight we're looking at, um, I'm looking at a classic combo. Uh, it may not be a classic in the game, but it's a classic for me anyway. Uh, it is um, a YT-1300 freighter piloted by Han Solo, and an Incom T-65 X-Wing piloted by Luke Skywalker. Um, there really is no focus on this build, I just want to have a bit of nostalgia, but um, I did try to make it as effective as it can be in um in a hundred point in a one hundred point build. Um, the X wing the the Falcons the the YT thirteen hundred's biggest advantage is that it has a turret as a primary weapon, so it can fire in any direction. It doesn't have to be in the firing arc. Um, the X wing it's faster. However, the X wing is faster. It's more maneuverable. But that being said, the YT can make some pretty. It can make some turns that the X-wing can't. Like the the for some for whatever reason, the YT can make a sharp one. Um, I don't understand how that works. But uh, whereas an X-wing can only make a sharp turns two and three. Um, again, it's probably because of the YT being so heavily modified. But anyway, here are the ships and their pilots. Let's look at the build. So this build is quite. It's 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 a two it's a two man it's a sorry it's a two ship build I should say. All of them have upgraded to full capacity to take full advantage of the squadron points. Um, but that said, we'll start with the smaller of the two. And it is piloted by Luke Skywalker. He has a pilot skill of 8. He flies the Incom T-65 X-Wing. He has an attack value of 2. A Jazzar Edge attack value of 3. A Gildy value of 2. A Hull value of 3. And a Shield value of 2. He can take on the Focus and Lock-On actions. He costs 28 squadron points. And he's able to take on an elite pilot skill upgrade, a warhead upgrade, and an astromech upgrade. His ability states, when defending, you may change one of your focus results into a hit, uh, an evade result. So with Luke Skywalker, um, if you have any, fo if you rule at least one focus result while you're evading, you, uh, his ability allows you to change that into an evade, which could help save you on that event, uh, that um, that evade token. Or sorry, that upgrade. Sorry, that focus token. <sighs> When you, um, if, if say the other enemy has a, pilot, a higher pilot skill and um, you need to, um, you want to save that for your attack. Uh, let's move on to the, um, the upgrades of the ship. Uh, for his modification, I've chosen a shield upgrade, which increases your, his shield value by one. So that means with, the, with, this, uh, with this upgrade, uh, Luke Skywalker now has um, attack three, agility two, hull three, and shield three. So he's able to say, with the shield upgrade, he's able to take one extra hit, which is good for um, countering criticals, um, because shields they absorb hits and criticals alike, regardless of how they're um, of how they um, how they're hit. Um, I don't know what I mean by that. Anyway, um, let's go on to the elite pilot skill, and that is dead eye. It states you may treat the attack target lock header as attack focus. When an attack instructs you to spend a target lock, you may instead uh, spend a focus token instead. So with Deadeye, you can substitute a focus token for uh, a lock-on when you're using a secondary, like a missile or torpedo, uh, which is great because it can fool your opponent, like, oh, I'm going to take a focus. The next thing you know, Deadeye lets you take, um, uh, such a, uh, use your uh, focus as, um, as a uh, target lock, which can actually also work in the reverse. Like, normally, people can take a target lock and then a focus, and then they can spend the target lock on their weapon and then take the focus action. It can work uh, the reverse way as well. Um, you can take a um, you can take you can use dead eye to spend your focus and then reroll whatever results you don't like with a target lock. Pretty nifty now that I think about it. Anyway, going on to the next upgrade is warhead. Is my personal favorite, flechette torpedoes. They have an attack value of three and can be used at range two to three. And they state, discard this card and spend your target lock to perform this attack. After you perform this attack, the defender receives one stress token if its hull value is four or lower. So again, this is why I love flechette. I love flechette torpedoes because they're great for dealing stress regardless if they miss or hit. Flechettes, doesn't matter if the attack hits or miss, they will get that, the enemy will get that stress if their hull value is four or lower. Be it their natural hull value is four or if the hull has been reduced to four or lower. And they deal some pretty decent damage too, three damage as well, so that's that's something. And finally for his astromech, a classic for him, which is R2-D2. Which states, after executing a green maneuver, you may recover one shield up to your shield value. So with R2-D2 plus the shield upgrade, as long as Luke keeps making green maneuvers, his shield will remain at full power. 
if he ever loses any shields. Because if, if you use a green maneuver and you have full shields, R2 can't use his ability because Luke's shield value will be 3, and he can't have more than 3. Uh, now I move on to the bigger ship of the two, and that is piloted by Han Solo. He has a pilot skill of 9, he flies the Corellian YT-1300 freighter, he has an attack value of 3, uh, agility value of 1, a hull value of 8, and a shield value of 5. He can take on the focus and lock-on actions, he costs 46 squadron points, so he is a very expensive ship to field. And he's able to take on an elite pilot skill upgrade, a missile upgrade, and two crew upgrades. His ability states, when attacking, you may reroll all of your dice. If you choose to do so, you must reroll as many of your dice as possible. So with Han Solo, uh, it, it's, his ability is similar to that of a target lock. Uh, if, you don't like a favor, if, you, if you don't like the results you've been dealt, you can reroll your dice. However, if you choose to do so, you must reroll every single one of your dice. So if you're attacking at range 1, or and yeah, range 1, and you say roll two hits and two blanks. If you choose, oh, excuse me. If you choose to re-roll that result, you have to re-roll every single one of your dice, even the hits you got. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, this one you're kind of placing luck in. You're kind of placing um, your um, your roll completely on luck even more. Uh, for his modification, I've given him a munitions failsafe, which, as you all know by now makes it that if you discard, if, if you uh, attack with a secondary, if it misses, you don't discard the secondary. Uh, his title card is none other than the Millennium Falcon itself, which states your action bar gains the evade action. So now Han Solo can take a focus, an evade, a focus, a lock-on, and an evade. Now for his actual upgrades, for his elite pilot skill, I've chosen Draw Their Fire. Which states, when a friendly ship at range 1 is hit by an attack, you may suffer one of the uncancelled critical results instead of the targeted ship. So Draw Their Fire uh, allows you to absorb critical hits for your your um, for your for ally. Which is great because Luke Skywalker, even though he's piloting an X-Wing, uh, it's not really that fr it's not really that durable. I mean, it has with the shield upgrade, it has 3 hull and 3 shields. So... If um if he's if he continues to stay at range one, any criticals that Luke would suffer, uh, Han will suffer instead because of draw their fire, and since Han and because Han has more shields than Luke, um, he's able to take the punishment more. Now for uh, his missile, I have chosen advanced homing missiles. They have an attack value of three. It can only be used at range two. And they state, discard this card to perform this attack. If this attack hits, deal one face of damage cards to the defender, then cancel all dice results. This kind of card is useful for ships that have an ability that makes it so that your your attack hits regardless. Um, ships like a ship like Lieutenant Blount, uh, his this card as well as the assault missile and the ion pulse missile will be perfect for um, a ship like him. But this is also good for any other ship as well that can take a missile upgrade because this the, the advanced homing missile. If your attack successfully hits, then um, the enemy suffers critical regardless of, of how many uh, dice results you got. So it's good for dishing up that kind of last that last um, that last critical hit in order to take down your opponent. And if you're lucky, it could be a direct hit, which will make the opponent suffer two damage instead of one. Now for his first crew, I've chosen a gunner. And gunner states after you perform an attack that does not hit. Hang on. You may immediately perform a primary weapon attack. You cannot perform this attack another, another attack this round. So with Gunner, um, because Han Solo will be going first, um, he will get to attack first. And if his attack misses, he can perform another primary weapon attack immediately with the Gunner act with the Gunner upgrade. Uh, but he will not be. But Han Solo will not be able to attack again this round. Which I guess I don't know why they need to stay that because every ship can attack only every, every enemy ship can only this ships can only attack once per round unless you're uh, unless you have like Coran Horn or um, uh, a Y wing with a BTLA four and a cannon or a turret. Um, but yeah, it's good for double tapping. And for a second crew slot, chose none other than Chewbacca himself, uh, Han Solo's co-pilot. It states, when you are dealt a damage card, you may immediately discard that card and recover one shield, then discard this upgrade card. So by discarding Chewbacca, if you take a hit, or sorry, if you take a hit, like a hull hit, regardless of hit, uh, regardless of it's um, a critical or a regular, 
you can discard Chewbacca or flip him face down or whatever to discard that card and recover one of your shields. So it's kind of a last ditch effort to. Um, so with Chewbacca, it basically makes it so that you have six shields because you discard the hull, you gain the shield back. And allows you to take one extra hit, say, if you were to use Draw Their Fire. Uh, so, yeah, this is. Um, uh, I haven't really thought of a name for this build yet. Uh, let's call this. Oh, I had a name for this. Uh, so, I guess we'll call it Solo Skywalking. I guess that works, yeah. It's a pretty dumb name, but whatever. Yeah, so this is my solo Skywalking build. Uh, its advantages, um, the Corellian, the uh, YT-1300, has a, these, it has the same, has attack value, it has a good attack value of 3. Um, it can fire in all directions because it's a turret. Um, it also can take on the evade action thanks to the Millennium Falcon title card, and the munitions failsafe will guarantee that uh, you'll keep your advanced homing missiles until they, uh, until they hit their mark. Uh, draw their fire will be useful for protecting um, Luke when because his ship will be smaller and more fragile. Gunner will allow you to double tap, and Chewbacca allows you to discard one of your damaged cards and recover a shield. By and then of course you discard Chewbacca. With Luke, uh, he has a he has a shield upgrade, so he can take one extra uh, critical hit. Uh, Deadeye allows him to um, trade off his target locks for focuses. Flechette torpedoes deal stress um, even if they miss, as long as the hull, uh, hull value is low enough. And Archer D2 can constantly keep repairing Luke's shields as long as he keeps making green maneuvers. Uh, the disadvantage is, well, just that. Uh, in order to use r 2 d effect, you need to you keep using green maneuvers. And the X-Wing only has about four green maneuvers. It has a uh, straight ahead, one. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's bank left, straight ahead, and uh, bank right maneuvers are all ones. And it's straight ahead, two maneuvers are green maneuvers. Uh, that's really it. So it, it kind of limits you. If you're going to repair your shields, it kind of limits you as to where you're going to go. Um, Han Solo, draw their fire is useful for protecting Luke. But it's you don't want to rely on it because um, uh, you'll lose your shields, and the only way you can repair, you can restore any one of your shields is with Chewbacca. And once he's done, he, he's used, he's done. Um, other than, and also the um, low agility value of the Falcon, um, it only has like one agility, so it has about the same agility value <laughs> as a Y wing or a B wing. Other than that, that's pretty much it. So yeah, this is my Skywalk. This is my uh, solo Skywalking build. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Any constructive criticism is greatly appreciated. If you like, you may use this build for any competitive or casual play, or if you want, you can tweak it or revamp it to your own specifications. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Corbin22, signing off.